Hello everyone, welcome to this session on knowing about the historical developments in social casework. Let me begin with a question of how many of you like to learn history? Well, many of us may dread this subject for the mere factual information that they provide. However, history can be made interesting in the way it is narrated. I am sure that at the end of this session you would feel the same. In this session we will be exploring the history of social casework. Social casework is a core and a direct method of practice in social work along with group work and community organization. In fact, it was one of the earliest evolved methods in social work practice. Knowing the history of social casework not only helps us to understand social casework as a method of social work practice, but also enables us to appreciate the roots of professional social work itself. At the end of this session, you will learn about the major historical landmarks in the development of social casework, the contributions made towards shaping social casework as a method of practice, the connectivity of casework as a method of social work. Understanding the history of social casework can be made interesting by grouping it under headings related to the historical landmarks in the development of working with individuals. These could be listed as the ancient society, the concept of philanthropy and worthiness, the dark period in Europe, the enactment of Elizabethan poor law, the role of the association for improving the conditions of the poor, the developments during the 19th century, charity organization society, the initiation of training and education, the school of social work. Let us now move on to discuss the happening during these landmarks. Social case work is a professional method that aims to develop the social functioning of an individual in the most basic sense. From the early days of its inception, the fundamental idea of social case work was to help people in distress. In all ancient societies, reaching out to those in need had always been a way of life. The feeling of goodwill and humanness was common among philanthropists and early churches. They pulled in their services to alleviate the effects of poverty, console poor, care for vulnerable groups like deprived children, the ailing and the elderly as well as correctional work with delinquents. Establishment of orphanages and homes for those in need of care were typical results of such activities. In all such activities, charity was based on the principle of philanthropy or compassion. Later, however, with increasing demands, the principle of worthiness came into existence in determining the allocation of aids to those in need. In the 16th century, plague or black death swept Europe and nearly one third of the population was affected by this. In fact, this period was called as the dark period in Europe. Added to this setback, problems of famine, crop failure, ill health and war resulted widows led to increased beggary in Europe. During this time, the then King Henry VIII in 1531 introduced a statutory law prohibiting beggary. In the year 1536, monasteries who were catering to the needs of the poor people were closed leading to aggravating beggary in Europe. The efforts of government did not address the needs of those in despair but escalated the situation making conditions worse and pathetic for people living in poor socio-economic situations. Queen Elizabeth I came to throne in 1558. Wanting to salvage the situation, 
She enacted the Elizabethan Poor Law in the year 1601, which had its base in the concept of charity. The law was framed to sort out services and to cater to the needs of those living in substandard conditions. The law by itself was an important effort on the part of the government to enlist categories of people in need of help to render service accordingly. The law also marks an important landmark of reiterating the role and responsibilities of governments in framing policies to address the needs of its people. However, administrative loopholes and corruption led to the failure of the law, which was supposed to cater to the needs of the vulnerable groups. The situation of the poor continued to be worse and flourishing charity and philanthropic groups sustained their best in providing relief services to the unfortunate. Following this, the Association for Improving the Conditions of the Poor was founded in 1843 and this association emphasized on self-respect, self-dependence and relief suitable to the needs of the people. It recognized that mere charity cannot solve problems of the less privileged. It also underlined the fact that dependency caused lack of self-respect leading to enduring charity for the whole life. In fact, this was the beginning of professionalization of charity social work. The emphasis in the process of helping shifted from relief to understanding. During the late 19th century, the rapid increase in social maladies disabled the government's ability in responding to the basic needs of the people. Individualized charity and philanthropic organizations were not able to address the issues at large. As a response to this, the need of facilitating and coordinating services appropriately was felt and in the last quarter of the 19th century, Charity Organization Society known as COS was established in England in the year 1869. Eight years after the COS was established in London, the first citywide charity organization was founded in the year 1877 in the USA. COS was made up of charitable groups that used scientific philanthropy to help the poor, the troubled and deviant persons. They recognized themselves as more than arms givers and their goal was to restore self-sufficiency and responsibility to the extent to which an individual could manage. They also operated as a central registration unit involving in recording of relief giving to people who were living in poverty. Here at this point let me share more information about COS as it is this organization which laid the seeds for professional social work practice. The COS operated with certain ideologies. They insisted on proper coordination of charitable endeavors to avoid overlap and competition between organizations. They established an organizational structure and system to assist people who appeared to have some level of need. Coordination of services and provision of services in a structured manner formed the prime principle of COS. COS believed that if charity was to be properly directed there has to be a scientifically organized examination of the circumstances of individuals and families who presented for a service. The COS accomplished this by deploying volunteers called as friendly visitors who made personal visits to the homes of the applicants and undertook investigations by examining individual cases, family situations and assessed them for suitability of services. Based on these reports submitted to the committees, help was rendered 
to those individuals moving them towards self sufficiency in the future the increasing demand replaced friendly visitors with people who took up this job for a fee and they were called as paid agents the early roots of social work practice can be clearly understood through this process of investigation and the basic techniques of case work instigated by cos continues to be applicable even till date in 1895 towards the end of 19th century in england a concept called almoners or outside visitors came into existence this was pioneered by sir charles locke who spent his life working to improve the welfare of the poor and the disadvantaged by lobbying and making contributions to welfare policy and legislation he appointed almoners to assist him in the hospitals to serve patients efficiently almoners were similar to friendly visitors and paid agents these workers have been recognized as the official representatives of the social work profession and the first practitioners of social case work the work of cos was very much structured the process of investigation termed as taking down the case by cos involved a detailed assessment of the applicant's circumstances requiring home visits the cos also issued guidance on how the process of taking down the case be organized following the assessment a judgment was made concerning an individual's eligibility to obtain a service the cos did not simply dole out financial charity but sought to find creative ways of maintaining and enhancing people's independence the influence of cos on the development of social work was enormous it not only successfully created the profession of social work but also helped define many of its core tasks many significant values such as the importance of the uniqueness of a client the need to deal with social problem at the individual and family level the requisite of respect for the inherent right to decide for oneself which reflect the essence of social work emerged out of this and were made part of social work philosophy initiation of training and education was the next landmark initiative in the history of social work the cos recognized that effective work required a level of training of those people undertaking it indeed one of its most significant legacies to social work was the development of systemic programs of education and training towards the end of the 19th century the new york school of philanthropy was established which engaged itself in providing the paid agents assistance to get trained in the art of undertaking an investigation arrive at a diagnosis and draw out a treatment plan for individual clients and families the founding of school system was the next important initiative taken in the history of social work the need for sufficient knowledge and skills to deliver efficient services to individuals and family was highly felt the conference organized for the employees of charity associations in 1873 was the first step taken to realize this need this was followed by a summer school at new york in 1898 the first school of social work was opened at amsterdam in 1899 in new york a school of social work was opened in 1904 initially its training period was 1 year and later in the year 1917 its training period was doubled as a result of all these work social work education with individual method was involved in the curriculum of the school as a separate subject 
the contributions of Mary Richmond to casework is noteworthy. She was the person to use the term casework for the first time to denote the process of working with individuals at the conference held for the employees of the charity associations. Following this, in the year 1917, she also wrote her first book called Social Diagnosis, which set forth a methodology for helping clients through systematic ways of assessing their problems and working with them. The book also gave an introduction to the principle of individualization and the client's right to self-determination. Having talked about the essential landmarks in the history of social casework, let us now explore the other impacts on the development of social casework. These could be grouped as the impact of the two world wars, the establishment of juvenile courts, the child guidance clinics, practices of medicine and psychiatry, formulations of sociological and psychological theories. The First World War made a wide impact on social casework. During this period, problems related to psychiatry was on the rise and gave scope for the practice of psychiatric social work. The contributions of Freud and his followers influenced the method employed by the caseworkers in dealing with the individuals. The implementation of individual study at hospitals first occurred in Boston with the efforts of Dr. Richard Cabot in 1905. Dr. Cabot encouraged social workers to visit patients home in order to monitor the patient after being discharged and investigate the economic situation of the family, educate families on prevention, spread and recurrence of the disease. Previously, these issues were ignored and hence the social status of the patients and their families were neglected too. The need for someone who can be in touch with the patients and their families to help them solve their problems was very much felt. In the same year, medical social work was made an official and essential part of the services offered by many hospitals in the USA. Let me now talk about the child guidance clinics. In 1909, the first child guidance clinic was opened in Chicago. This service advanced in a short time and it revealed the necessity of a multi-person team which included psychiatrists, psychologists and social work practitioners. At that time, the function of the social worker in the treatment team was intended to report the parents' thoughts about the child's problems and their expectations of the treatment to the school, to inform the family about the causes of the child's incompatible behaviors and to clarify them how to change their relationship. In the beginning, these clinics were established to assist the juvenile courts, but in time, children with behavioral disorders, students who fail in the school, children who had eating problems, obesity and bladder control were added to the content of activities of these clinics. Thus, the child guidance clinics catered to a wide range of issues found among children. Next, let us discuss about the contributions of sociological and psychological theories. Sociological and psychological approaches began to affect the practice of social work with individual. Freud's psychoanalytic approach made a major impact in the development of the method of social work with individual. Social work with individual diverged to psychiatric orientation and gained a therapeutic qualification. It was Mary Richmond who introduced the concepts of diagnosis or assessment, treatment or intervention and evaluation in social casework. 
and that gained a scientific identification. For the first time in this period, textbooks on casework were published. Next, let us talk about the period of economic depression. In 1930s, due to the financial crisis in the USA, practices of social work with individual started to gain psychosocial nature. With the economic hardships of the First World War, the individuals and families mental health problems increased. Social workers attached to social welfare institutions were trying to respond to the needs of society with economic programs and social workers in clinics focused on interpersonal relationship problems. Social casework entered a two-way development period. The first, the connection of social roles and with personality, relationship between the individual psychological balance and social balance, dynamics that affect the family life and interactions in the family. Secondly, the concepts related to self-psychology theory and defense mechanisms began to be used in practice for the first time. Case workers had to consider the economic factors which were causing misery to persons leading to emotional distress and breakdown. The focus shifted from individual to modification and change of the person's environment to enable him or her to adapt to his or her situation satisfactorily. With a psychosocial approach that developed during 1930 to 1940, social workers started to care about not only the individual but also their relationship with the family and society. Also, they started to learn about the social, economic, psychological and cultural factors that affected the individual and thus added a new dimension to their applications. Let me now share about the impact of World War II. The residual impact of World War II necessitated the use of the framework of social sciences. The war gave rise to an increase in the personal problems faced by the individuals. This in turn meant that the scope of social work had to be extended so that it could reach out to more individuals. Then came the era of private practice. After 1950s, the era of private practice started. Professional agencies offering social service to the needy started growing and casework was used as a methodology of entering into the community. After the 1960s, Social casework was influenced by different approaches with variety of individual and social problems. The effectiveness of psychoanalytic and previous approaches in solution of the problems was questioned and for more effective solutions, a holistic approach was adopted in social casework practice. In the 1980s, in the USA and Europe, Generalist social work application was approved in school of social work curriculum. Today, the demand is to train social workers who are multi-perspective, have skills and abilities to use all the methods of social work as and when required, work with different levels of formal systems such as families, individuals, groups, community, society at the same time work on the basis of social justice and human rights. Having known about the historical evolution of casework, I am sure all of you are now eager to know about its development in India. We Indians have been influenced by many across the globe. The early roots of professional social work in India could be traced to the Social Service League established by N. M. Joshi, one of the founders of the trade union movement in the year 1911. The league organized training programs 
for volunteers whose services were later utilized for different types of relief, rehabilitation and assistance for the poor and the destitute. These were individual efforts that did not materialize into large scale academic programs. However, it was Dr. Clifford Manshart's effort that influenced Sir Dorabji to initiate a full time course in social work. In the year 1936, Dr. Clifford Manshart had a vision for a postgraduate school of social work of national stature that would engage in a continuous study of Indian social issues and problems and impart education in social work to meet the emerging need for trained human power. Dr. Clifford Manshart influenced the trustees of the Sadarabji Tata Trust to start a full-time career oriented educational program in social work. This subsequently influenced the direction of social work education and social research in India. In the year 1944, the school was renamed as the Tata Institute of Social Sciences that is TIS. In 1946, casework figured both as a theoretical course and also as a method of practice in the academic program. Since then, a lot of foundational perspectives and thoughts have enlarged and enriched social work as a profession. The addition of indigenous theoretical knowledge base has strengthened social work as an academic program. Let me now sum up. Being the first method of social work, social case work basically targets at working with individuals and aims to help individuals decode their problems and solve them to fulfill their social functions. Large scale poverty, rampant spread of diseases, war resulted widows, orphans, abandoned elders, deserted children, increased beggary were prevalent problems that needed attention. Philanthropists and religious orders were to some extent addressing the issue but the demands were unmatched. Legislations also failed to resolve the problems. The inadequacy of charity work and poor laws stripped people the will to fight and created dependency. To counter operate these issues, coordination of services in a structured manner leading to independency of individuals was aimed through the services of COS. The COS laid the foundation seed for the development of the profession of social work. The impact of the two world wars, establishment of juvenile courts, child guidance clinics, practice of medicine and psychiatry, formulations of sociological and psychological theories added scope for the practice of social casework. Social casework benefits from different approaches, methods and techniques. Social work with individual took a mission of helping the poor first and sociological approaches reoriented the application methodology. Starting from a scientific philanthropy, social casework emerged to become an organized effort to reach out those in need. From the first world war until the 1930s, casework was mainly influenced by the upcoming psychological views. During 1930s until 1960s, the psychosocial approaches dominated social casework applications. From 1960s up to our present day, professionals use the holistic or multi-perspective approaches to solve new and complex problems that occur as a result of rapid changes in social life. Theoretical knowledge transferred from various disciplines is used to identify and solve problems. From the second half of the 20th century, rapid advances in behavioral sciences and social sciences affected social casework method. Social casework began to be called as social work with individuals in the literature. I am sure that this session was informative to you. Let me sign off for now 
and hope to meet you again in some other session. Thank you.